here and today I want to go ahead and share my tutorial with you on how to make a paracord bracelet. Actually one that looks exactly like this. I'm actually uh, using the Cobra Stitch Weave which is relatively simple. So it's a great weave to get you started, hopefully more motivated so we can go ahead and uh, progress to more complicated weaves in the future. Now I feel like I've been around paracord my whole life uh, attaining the rank of Eagle Scout and one of the subjects that I was focused on the most was pioneering. So any type of knot or lashing, I was always trying to seek and learn something new and using paracord along with my lashing and other knots to be able to build gateways or entrances into our campground, to be able to uh, utilize a tripod, using tripod lashing with the paracord to uh, do some Dutch oven cooking. And then as I became a United States Marine, paracord seemed to be everywhere, not only in the airborne division, but all of our gear, our Alice packs and everything seem to be dummy corded or marine proof with paracord, which just basically meant that we would tie off the paracord to our packs and then whatever other components that we had, let's say a canteen. So the other end would tie off to the canteen. That way during the maneuver, if that canteen came loose, I'd be able to retrieve it because it was still on my person, still attached via that paracord. And then we also realized the use and the benefit of having that cordage out with us in the field. And basically we were limited to our skill set. So the one lesson to you is the more that you learn about pioneering, the more that you understand and are able to utilize various techniques, the more valuable that power cord will be to you. So what I want to do with you today is show a simple way to always have some cordage on you, which is to have a power cord bracelet. And I'm going to show you how to tie this Cobra Stitch weave so that you can make your own paracord bracelet. So let's get started. So we're ready to begin tying our uh, Cobra Stitch paracord bracelet. Should look exactly like this one. I'm using these two colors today to make this two color uh, bracelet with the Cobra Stitch. I'm actually using spider cord paracord made by Survival Life. But once again, use whatever paracord is your preference. I am using this wooden jig here. You don't need it for the Cobra Stitch uh, because it is a, a relatively simple weave. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I thought visually it would be easier to show you on the jig. So I'm going to go ahead and use that. We have our clasp here or our buckle. And we can put that down. And what I have here are the two colors that we're using for the paracord. And I have two equal lengths of five feet. And what I want to do is go ahead and fuse these two together, making it one longer rope uh, combined with both colors. So I'll go ahead and just heat this up real quick with my lighter. Okay, once that's done, go ahead and put them together to fuse them. Just hold them down for a couple seconds. I'll go ahead and wet my fingers. Squeeze them together a little bit more just to flatten them out. And don't worry about it being super, super fastened because this is actually going to be inside the bracelet itself. Uh, so it's just a matter of uh, getting them to stick together for now. Now I want to go ahead and uh, measure out my wrist. What I do is just take a little spare piece of paracord. This one's actually fit to my wrist already, but just to give you a quick demonstration, I go ahead, or you can go ahead and just get your strand, tie it around your wrist. Now I like mine, uh, my braces to fit a little bit looser and these tighten up a little bit more than the actual size. So I always leave that much more of a gap, maybe a half inch to an inch or so. So I have that. That's pretty much what I'm looking for. I can go ahead and of course I set up my jig already to the length that I wanted it to. So I'd start here on the zero, move it over to the end. If I had to, I would adjust this. And same thing if you're not using a jig. You're just going to want your buckles to basically be this length. All right, so keep that in mind. Make sure you measure that so you do get a good fit on your uh, paracord bracelet. I'll go ahead and open up my uh, buckle here, stick the one end in onto the jig, and then I have this under other end here that's bent. And what I want to do is go ahead and feed this through. So I'm feeding it through the end on the buckle here. Sometimes these get a little tricky because this buckle's a little bit smaller uh, than the other buckles, but for the Cobra Stitch, I actually do like it. Uh, just to me, it looks uh, a little bit better aesthetically. So I'll go ahead, feed that through. Now remember, the color that you're actually going to be using for accenting, which is the side here, which would be the green, you want the green strand to your left. So keep that in mind as you're creating this or feeding this through. Uh, and I also want to have about an inch or so, inch and a quarter uh, feed through here so that uh, it does get tucked in and, and hidden out of sight when we do make the bracelet. All right? It'll make more sense uh, once we do get started. And I can go ahead and feed this through, but what I like to do is clip this on, 
to the jig since I have it here and I'm going to go and locate the other two ends on these strands and feed them through the loop here and then just pull them through up to the top. Okay, once again, making sure I have that one inch leeway there, not too much longer than that. Going ahead, feeding that through. So here we got our inch, inch and a quarter, pulling it taut. Then I'll go ahead and find the other two ends, feeding it through the buckle here. So keep in mind, it does get a little bit tricky, but that was nice and easy because I didn't have that end fused. I'll go ahead, do the same thing with this end here, and pulling the green to the left. Once again, accent color to the left, main color in the center to the right. Now I actually like to go ahead and just fuse these ends now that I got them through the buckle itself, just to make things easier so they don't loosen up any further, just briefly. Same with the other end on the green. Use them briefly and we are ready to get started so once again with the accent color here on the left what I want to refer to the two strands in the middle here uh, is uh, I'm just gonna call it the spine just to make things easier as we're uh, going over this tutorial so what I want to do here now that it's nice and taut all right almost giving it this little bouncy tra trampoline feel I want to go ahead and take this green and I want to go behind the spine. So I'm forming basically this little loop and going behind the spine here with the green and over the red. Okay, now the red itself is going to do the opposite and go over the spine here. All right, so the green came under, the red is going over and through the loop. Pulling it through, making it nice and taut. Okay, so this is the first stitch, so you want to make sure that you're moving it up with your thumbs to make it tight and also pulling out to the sides to make it nice and taut. Once again, giving it that little trampoline feel. Now, always remember, we're always going to be working from the left here. The colors are going to alternate between the red and the green, but we always want to go ahead and start out on the left. Now, keep in mind that the first thing that we did with the green color is go underneath the spine and over the red. With the red itself, we want to do the opposite. So we want to go over the spine and under the green. Now, the green, once again, goes underneath or behind the spine and then up through this loop. So we're going underneath the spine, up through the loop, pulling it through. Once again, cinching down, pulling to the left and to the right, making it nice and snug. You want to make sure that everything's nice and tight so that you get a good uh, looking weave as you're doing that. So once again, that's nice and taut in there. Okay, and we're back to working with the green. And just like in the beginning, the green goes behind the spine or underneath and over the red. Red will do the opposite. Red will go over the spine and through the green loop. Over the spine and through. Go ahead, pulling that through once again, cinching down the sides nice and tight now we're back to the red red is going to go over the spine and underneath the green while the green once again goes behind the spine and up through this red loop just pulling through once again nice and taut pulling to the left pulling to the right and cinching it up green once again goes behind the spine over the red and the red is going to go over the spine through the green loop very repetitive relatively simple concept and if you do mess up it'll start twisting on you and you kind of see that something's wrong there so you kind of just backtrack and uh, start all over so we have the red once again as you recall red goes over red goes over the spine under the green and the green will go once again underneath or behind the spine and up through the loop. Pulling it nice and tight, pulling it through. One more time here, green goes behind the spine, over the red. Red goes over the spine, 
through the loop here. Going ahead, pulling it tight. Back to the red. If you recall, red goes over the spine and under the green. And the green goes behind the spine and through the red. So we'll go ahead with a little bit of the magic of editing. Since you can tell we already got our nice pattern started, we're going to go ahead and just re keep repeating the whole motion until we get to the end. Okay, so we're good to go here. Finish with our bracelet. Came out pretty good. Now just what I would like to do here is just kind of finish it off by pulling the screen one through this little upper lip here, which of course I would use my Marlin spike just to loosen it up a bit. And then I like to go ahead and attach my fid or needle just to make things easier. And uh, since I do have the tools, might as well uh, utilize them. Okay, so now we have our fit attached or needle just to make things easier. Now remember, this is the underside. And from this up point here with the green, I want to feed it through this little bite here. Pulling it nice and tight. Making sure the other end is nice and tight. Remember, this is the inside of the wrist, so it's going like this. So we want it to be hidden on the inside. That's why I fed it through there. And from here, I can go ahead, cut off that end. This end's nice and tight, and it's already on the inside. So I can go ahead and cut that end off. Go ahead, grab my lighter, gently, not trying to get too close here so I don't damage the rest of the bracelet. So I'm going ahead and fuse that down. Go ahead on the other end that we just cut here and fed through with our fit or with our needle. Going ahead once again, not trying to get too close so I don't scorch the rest of the bracelet. That's the inside here, so we're good to go. It's nice and fused. 
that work is actually on the inside. And our bracelet is complete. And that is the Cobra Stitch two-color paracord bracelet. Once again, this is Helder. I hope that you found this tutorial useful.